Welcome everybody to our Marine Mysteries lesson. Now I'm going to do three activities with you today. We're going to learn about some sea animals. We're going to do a little activity that's behind us on the floor, which will be lots of fun. And then we're going to do one last little activity back at the front. Okay, does that sound like fun? Fantastic. Well, my name is Mandy and I'm very happy to be here this morning and I'm going to get my bits and pieces. Okay, next, we're going to start, we're going to have a look at the screen. Can anybody tell me what they think this animal is? Yes, you've got your hand up. Very close. Seahorse, it's not a seahorse, but it's very close to a seahorse. Any other idea? Yes. Well done, it is a sea dragon, a weedy sea dragon. Okay, and I have another picture here. Did you know that weedy sea dragons are very shy fish and they hide under piers and they use something to help them hide. It's a special word. Animals use it when they make their bodies look like where they live. Yes, camouflage. Camouflage. Fantastic, that's a great word, isn't it? Okay, so that's the weedy sea dragon. Now I want you to all say weedy sea dragon together after three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Weedy sea dragon. Perfect, guys. Okay. And just to give you an idea when you're doing this, we've got a little information cheat sheet on the back for you. Okay, my next picture. Now, look at this beautiful, colourful thing. Who can tell me what they think this is? Yes, it is a starfish, yes. Now, this one's got a funny name. Does anybody think they know what the name of this starfish, or sea star as we call them now? Alexi. A colourful one? A colourful one. He's definitely colourful, isn't he? But it's not what he's called. Any other ideas? Okay, I'm going to give you, yes. A five-point seesaw. A five-point seesaw. That's a good guess too. How do you think of that? I'm going to give you a big clue. We can eat the things that he's named after, and they're really yummy. Well done. What's your name? Cooper. Well done, Cooper. It's a biscuit seesaw. Now, I would say though, please don't eat these. <coughs> they taste really yucky, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm looking for two volunteers to come and help me explain why sea stars are not nice to eat. Ashley, up you come, and Aaron. Okay, can you guys come to the front? Don't trip over the wire, Aaron. Beautiful, well done. Now, Aaron, you're going to be the sea star's breakfast. Is that okay? Fantastic. Now they like to eat things like mussels and pippies. So I'd like you to be a mussel. So can you kneel down on the floor? Wonderful. Can you put your hands over your head like it's a shell? Fantastic. Now Ashley, you and I, I'll help you with this, okay? We're going to be sea stars. Okay, is that alright? You're looking a bit scared. You'll be alright. Okay, put your hands out like this. Wonderful, okay. Feeling hungry, Ashley. I am. Okay, let's go. Go over here. So you stand on the side, I'll stand on this side. Ooh, look at this. Yummy food. Now, a sea star. He eats his food in a very funny way. He doesn't have any teeth. He doesn't have any hands to break open Aaron's shell. What he does, are you ready for this, Ashley? He gets his tummy, holding your tummy, mm -hmm. brings it up, and he brings it out of his mouth. Oh, good. Uh, uh, like that. And he puts it on the muscle and then he peels the shell apart. Oh, and he's got his stomach on there. Now, that's not the end of the story because he then makes Aaron the muscle all squidgy by blending in. Can everybody make a blending noise for me? Yeah, that's how it fits. Yeah, Aaron's very squidgy now. Now, then, when he's all squidgy, we're going to sock Aaron and our tummy back inside our mouth. Are you ready for this, Ashley? Andy? Right in. Down. Oh, I'm pretty sure it'll be for it. Oh, yum, lovely. And that is how a sea 
dog eats his food. Fantastic. Everyone give Ashley and Aaron a round of applause. You can sit the wonderful ones here. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Ashley. You can go and sit back there. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's our 50 star. Just going to get prompts on the back. My last picture of this activity. It's a fish. It's a blue fish. Hands up. Remember, no calling out. Okay, guys, hands up if you think. Oh, a new hand. What do you think it is? A blue fish. It's definitely a blue fish, but there's another part of his name. Holly. A blue devil fish. Wonderful. Now, it's fair to say that the juniors probably won't know that, so you might get blue, blue grumpy fish, blue spotty fish, okay? My advice to you when you're asking the preps, any of these or the juniors, is don't have five, seven, eight answers, two or three, and then either give them a massive clue or just tell them the answer because you will be here forever. Put in the and then put devil horns on it. Oh, you could do that back at your old school, definitely. Okay, so now we have the blue devil fish. These fish. They grow to 40 centimetres long. Can you all hold your hands like this? This is how big a blue devil fish is. But you won't see this fish snorkeling because they live deep down. You have to be a scuba diver, okay? So you need to put on your mask. Everyone put on your mask with me. Can I put your breathing tube in? Okay, we're gonna go down. All right, go swimming down where these blue fish are. Now, the funny thing about these blue fish is that they like to bite things, particularly things that are blue. So I'm looking around, oh, I've got a few blue uniforms here, so you guys might be in trouble, and they might come and bite you. Actually, they bite everything, because where they live, everything looks blue. So if you guys, when you're bigger, you go scuba diving, make sure you stay away from these big fish, because you'll have to buy a new wetsuit. Okay, so that's our blue devil fish. All right, I'm going to see if you can remember what all of our animals are. So I'm going to show you the picture. I'm going to say one, two, three, and I want you to all say the name together. Do you think you can do that? Wonderful. Are you ready? One, two, three. Wee wee sea dragon. Okay, let's try it again. Remember, it's a weedy sea dragon. Are you ready? One, two, three. Wee wee sea dragon. Perfect. Okay, next picture. One, two, three. Biscuit starfish. Biscuit starfish or biscuit sea star. Should we try that again? You ready? One, two, three. Biscuit starfish. <laughs> okay, some of you still want to call it a starfish. That's all right. All right, and the last one. One, two, three. Blue devil fish. Oh, good. We all agreed on that one. Fantastic. It is a blue devil fish. Okay, well, that's the end of the food activity. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be sitting around my blanket that's behind you. But we're going to do this nice and slowly because otherwise there'll be people tripping over everybody. The first thing I want everyone to do is stand up for me. Beautiful. Then can you all turn around to face the other way? And I'm going to pick up my microphone and come around this side. Okay, now, the first row. So we're going to make a big circle with lots of... Uh, 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 uh. Big circle with lots of space so that I can walk around in the middle. So my first row, can you go around the far side and sit over here? That's it. Beautiful. Well done. Come and sit down on the floor. Perfect. Marvellous. Sit down there. It's a little bit further out because we need to fit lots of people in, so... Charlotte, can you move back a little bit for me? Beautiful. Okay, the next row, can you come and join on next to Talia? Come and sit down. Wonderful. Doing a great job. Okay, Noah, can you go round and sit next to Kristen? Beautiful. Remember, we've still got to fit a couple of extra people in here, so you might need to move back a little bit, make the circle a little wider. Awesome. A little bit further, a little bit further. Okay. 
And Tara, can you come and start to fill in this space? And we'll see how many we can fit in there. All right, we fit the two of you. And then Trent, can you, can you guys go and find a little space and sit down? in the middle put my so whoever I'm gonna pick some volunteers good well done guys can you guys move up a little bit and make room for Noah okay so we're gonna pretend that we're down at the beach it's a beautiful day for being at the beach and we're gonna go and see what we can find looking for some volunteers to come and help me. People who are sitting beautifully. Okay. And you must remember that there's a wire here, so I don't want anybody to trip over it. Okay. Let's have a look. Who would like to come up and help me with the first one? Alright. India. Up you come, India. Wonderful. India. There are four things on my blanket and we're going to go for a little walk down the beach hmm and we're going to see something interesting would you like to pick up one of the things on my blanket oh wow you went straight for that now india i'm guessing you know what that is a water bottle now is it a water bottle that's being used or is it would we call it something else we would call it rubbish, wouldn't we? That's right. Well done. India, very sort of quickly, can you just walk around, make sure everybody gets a good closer look at the water bottle so you can go a little bit closer back here and just walk around so that everyone gets a good view. It's a bit of rubbish. Now, that's a bit disappointing. Hands up, who thinks... Hands up, who thinks that should be there? None of you. That's fantastic. That's right. It is some rubbish. Hands up who thinks they know how that rubbish got to the beach. Mm. Yes. Somebody, Somebody maybe threw it on the ground. Do you think that's what happened, India? Maybe. Yeah, it could have happened. There's another way that rubbish can get to the beach, though. Yes. Holly. Um, Fantastic. What Holly said was that somebody might have thrown this piece of rubbish that India's got on the ground and then it's gone down into the drains when it rains and those drains go to the sea. So where, India, should people put that rubbish? In the bin. Okay. Or the recycling bin. Well done. Thank you very much, India. You can sit down. Okay. Let's choose some else. Oh, your hand is up first. Hands up you come. Trent, just like India, we're walking down the beach. Some interesting things. You want to pick one of those things up for me? Oh, you went for that one. Trent, you know what that is? It's like some hard seaweed or uh, something off the tree. It looks like something off the tree. Okay, or something off seaweed. Does everybody agree with that? Hands up who thinks they know what this is too. Coral? You think it's coral? It might be coral. Any other ideas? No other ideas. You got your hand up. Do you have your hand up? Okay. Well, Trent, you were right with the first thing. It is hard piece of seaweed. Now, Trent, can you come and stand over behind India for me? You go to the over to get through. Face the circle. And can you hold that up like this for me? Fantastic. Because you're being a rock, Trent. And you have got what's called a hold fast stuck to your head. And I need another volunteer to help me and Trent show you how big that seaweed can grow. What's your name? Ria. Yeah. Ria, up you come, Ria. Okay, you come and stand over here for me, Ria. You're gonna be the end of the seaweed and you're gonna to pretend to grow. So what I want you to do, Ria, I want you to walk forward until I tell you to stop. You think you can do that? Perfect. Okay, off you go, Ria. Wonderful. That's it. Yeah, keep going. 
Okay, yeah, go very carefully through the circle between the girls. That's it, keep going, Ria. Keep going, head towards the path. That's it, keep going. A bit further. Okay, yeah, keep going. Okay, can you go through the doors, Ria? Oh my god. Wonderful. Okay, yeah, keep going. A bit further. And you can stop there. Okay. <laughs> that is how much the seaweed can grow off the whole crust that Trent has got all the way to Ria. How amazing is that? Okay, Ria, thank you. You can come back now. Marvellous. And you can sit back down too. Thank you very much, Trent. Alright, so that's a whole crust. Alright. Another person that will come up. Let's have a look. Alana, right. okay. Alana, you come, Alana. Okay, we've got two things. Would you like to choose one of them, Alana? Ah, Alana, do you know what that is? A sea sponge. You guys are too good. Okay, it is a sea sponge. Well done. Can you walk around, because I bet everybody can get a good look at that. Can you walk around the circle? Remember not to trip over the wire and just show everybody what this is. Now, sea sponges. Very pretty under the water. That one looks a little bit like a coconut, doesn't it? Some of the cracks actually think it is a coconut. Sometimes a rotten apple. I've had that idea before. Quite strange. Um, funny story about sponges. You can take a living sponge. I say you, I mean a crazy scientist. No, not you. Thank you very much, Alana. You can sit back down. Beautiful. You can take it to your lab. You can put it in a blender. You can zap it till it's a smoothie. Okay. If you're a really crazy scientist, you might drink it. But you wouldn't do that because it would taste horrible. But you can put it in an aquarium. And that sponge will come back together and carry on growing on the side of the aquarium. Which is quite amazing when you think about it. Because I'm pretty sure if I took a banana and a strawberry and put it in a blender and then poured it into a bowl, that strawberry and banana is just going to look like a mushy strawberry and a banana. It's not going to come back to the way it was before I blended it. So sponges amazing. How long have you ever found a sponge at the beach? Wow. Next time you find one, you can say, wow, how amazing these sponges are. Okay. Last, last thing. Mm. Kristen, up you come. I have to make sure I've got Kristen. Well, there's only one thing for you to choose, so can you pick that up for me? Now, I'm guessing you know what that is. A shell. A shell. Yeah, it is a shell. But what's in the middle of the shell? A hole. A hole. Now, is it a really perfect hole? Or is it at all a broken hole? Perfect. Perfect. Do you have any idea how that hole got there? A sea creature or something? What kind of sea creature? I'm sure. Okay. Was the sea creature trying to get in or get out? In. In. Oh, very interesting. You're almost right. Can you go around and show everybody the hole in the middle? Remember my wire? Anybody like to help Kristen out and to tell us what kind of sea creature? Yeah. Um, that is a pippy shell. Yeah. But do you know what kind of animal was trying to get at the pippy shell? No, that's okay. It's could be a starfish, but do you remember the starfish when we were up there? Thank you very much, Kristen. You can sit back down. We didn't have any teeth, so we couldn't have made the hole. We'd have to open the shell like that. But a very good answer. Yes, India. Could be a crab, because they've got spiky little pincers, haven't they? I reckon they'd make a really broken hole. So it must be something else. Something that drills into animals. Any kind of things that drill into animals? Well, ticks, but um, that's really good. Yes, I know what you're saying, but ticks would be in the skin, wouldn't they? We wouldn't be able to get through the shell. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
too, not a shrimp. It's actually a sea snail that does this. A carnivore sea snail. Who can tell me what carnivore means? Yes. Meat eater. Meat eater, that's right. And these snails, they have a really special tongue. And on the end of that tongue are five knives. What they do is they spin that tongue with those five knives so that they can drill a hole. Everyone make a drilling sound for me. That's right. They drill a hole into that and then the snail liquidizes the little pithy inside, makes them all squidgy and then he sucks them up through the hole. So next time you see a shell like this at the beach, you'll be able to tell all your friends how the hole got there. And it's really handy because you can make it into a nice necklace as well. Now, my blanket. Mm -hmm. Has anybody seen it move? You have? Oh, really? The wind. I don't want it moving. It's supposed to move. Anybody got any ideas what it might be? And remember, if you know the answer, try and think about what a threat might say. What do you think it is? A rock? Could be a rock. It could be boring. Now we'll just bring a rock, would I? Maybe a bone. Maybe a bone. Okay, could be a bone. Any other idea? A cut tree. A cut tree. Okay. I'm thinking more about stuff from the ocean. So, so unless you get ocean tree, it probably wouldn't bring a tree. What are you thinking of? A turtle. Oh, okay. Could be a turtle. What do you think? <coughs> coral. Yeah, lovely piece of coral, maybe. A shark. Oh my goodness. Oh gosh. <laughs> Something dead. Well, he's not moving, but he doesn't smell. So hopefully he's not something dead. Okay, should we have a look at it? Yeah. All right, you ready? One, two, three. It's a rock. It's a rock. It's a bone. It's a bone. That's right. And this is a very special bone. And this is a whale bone. Any old whale bone, this is a blue whale bone. Blue whales are the biggest animals. And so that you all know where this bone comes from, I want you to all put your arm out like that. Put your hand up. This bone here. The top of a whale's arm bone. Okay? Now, do whales have arms? Who says whales have arms? Who says whales don't have arms? What do they have then? Fins. Well, they do have fins, but you know it's really funny. If you look inside a whale's fin, they look exactly like our arms without a thumb. We even have fingers. Whales do kind of have arms. Okay, well that's the end of our beach combing part of the lesson. We've got one more activity to do. And we're going to be sitting back at the front where we started. But we're going to do it nice and slowly. So, from come in to Juliet, you can stand up for me. So you guys don't trip over that. And then from India round to Tara, can you come stand up for me? Brilliant. And India, can you lead your way? Can you go make the third row? You top pick up. You guys guessed it, you are going to be the 
got it right okay so it lives down the road from my school okay you ready for the next one this is a globe fish for that little cute eyes looking okay hands up who thinks this lives down the road from my school okay oh, look at everybody else and make your own you know we have six people who are going on it's good Okay, hands up who thinks it lives somewhere else in the world. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, hands down. Those of you who said down the road from my school, give yourselves a pat on the back. Well done. Okay. Next picture. Some dolphins. A little baby one. He's called Bouncer. Very cute. Hands up who thinks they live down the road from my school. Oh, wow, a lot more hands. My goodness. Okay, thank you. Hands down. Hands up who thinks they live somewhere else in the world. A few hands. Okay, thank you. Okay, these live down the road from my school. So give yourselves a pat on the back. I think you're starting to get the hang of this game. Wonderful. Okay, my last picture. Are you ready for this one? Well, that's very interesting, Julian, that you said it was a jellyfish. Because a lot of animals would think it was a jellyfish, but it's not, is it? What is it? It's a plastic bag. So, hands up who thinks this lives down the road from my school. Yeah, okay. Hands up who thinks it lives somewhere else in the world. Ah, what did you say? Everywhere. Everywhere. That's a bit of a trick question because you could have voted for both. But you're right, it also does live down the road from my school. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. And I want you to repeat after me when I say, where does it live? You're all going to say what? Down, down the road. road. Oh, you can do better than that. Let's try it again. Where does it live? Down the road. Okay, fantastic. So let's go back to the beginning. The brain and enemy, where does he live? Down the road from my school. Perfect. The globe fish, where does he live? Down the road from my school. Awesome. The dolphin, where does he live? Down the road from my school. Beautiful. And lastly, the plastic bird. Down the road from my school. Fantastic. Well done. All these amazing things live down the road from your school. Well, that is the end of my lesson today. Have you guys had fun? Yes. yes. Did you learn lots? Yes. Fantastic. Well, thank you and give yourselves a round of applause.